Hi, this is Randy from Friday's Golf, and thank you guys for taking the trip with me down here. I am now in Newport News, Virginia, which let's just say is the worst name of a city I've ever heard of. I mean, what do you even call your news station? Newport News News? So the reason I'm down here in Virginia is to do a collaboration with my golf spy. For those of you who don't know what my golf spy is, it's basically a website for golf fanatics. Uh, I'm down here to do some collaboration work with them, make some video content, but also give you guys kind of a behind the scenes look at what their headquarters is like because it's, it's not just some guy in their mom's basement with a laptop writing golf forums. Uh, there's actually a headquarters where they do a lot of their testing. So I'm gonna check out the facility with you guys and kind of show you the behind the scenes. So let's go take a look. So this is Sam Robinson from My Golf Spy. You're the social media, what's the official title? Well, I'm actually a director of the, the testing facility. Well, let me reintroduce you as not the social media guy. <laughs> this is Sam Robinson. He is actually, you run the testing facility for My Golf yep. Spy. So anytime you guys do like the best, you know, clubs of 2018, like driver testing, ball testing, anything, you're the one that heads exactly, that up. Yep. You know, any any kind of data that you see on the website, um, most wanted mostly, you know, all the big testing, like our driver test and, and stuff like that, um, that was that was all me. You're reading all these advertisements, you're watching all these all these commercials on TV and companies are promising you ten to fifteen yards longer. We don't want people going out there thinking they're they're gonna gain yards if it's not true. Okay. Um, and you know, a lot of times it is, sometimes it's not. But every every company is gonna gonna provide their own marketing and, and say their club is the best and we just wanna make sure that we're telling the consumer which one is the actual best. We have our writing staff, so our main guy is John Barber, Chris Nickel, um, Dan Mann's always been our, our gadget and training aid guy, Dave um, Dave Wolf is our putter guy, but you know the the staff, I guess you would call it is myself, I'm the director of the facility, Harry is our director of soft goods testing, Adam's the owner obviously, um, Tony Covey is our editor, and then we just um, brought on a new video content creator guy, Matt. And, th and those are full time guys? Yeah, yep, this is my nine to five. Okay. So, and that Harry's the same way, Adam, you know, his is a 24 seven. So this is it right here? Yeah, pretty unassuming. I was gonna say, I mean, it's definitely covert, I guess right. the name fits, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> You don't even have it on the outside of the building. Oh, you do. It's, it's on, on the, the door, yeah. Oh, it's kind of like a private detective. So from your perspective, like what do you think my golf spot represents? I think it's a good litmus test. It's a good like, it's where you can go, in my opinion, to get like a good starting point if you're looking for a driver. For a long time, just thought it was a forum. So we're not was a it? forum. The blog was the original thing. That's where my golf spot started. Correct. It was just a, a blog. Correct. And then people, we grew, and people were like, "Hey, you guys got to start a forum." And I think the majority of the reason why they ask us to start a forum is because Golf WRX had a forum and we were a little bit different than Golf WRX and I think people wanted an alternative to that where it was everybody hitting 350 yard drives and I created moral codes rather than rules and that was just be a good person and it's based on a few things and that's educating and empowering consumers that's our goal right so uh, we call it consumer first and we really do put the consumer first and the companies come way behind that. Our job is not to please the manufacturer. Our job is to tell the story about how products perform for consumers when they're gonna put it in their hands, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, uh, yes, they have been very angry and upset and threatened to sue us multiple times, but we've gotta stand our ground and if we don't, we're going to be just like any other golf media outlet there is in the world. And you guys can probably hear in the background someone hitting balls. It seems like every minute of the day there's somebody here hitting uh, testing equipment and do you want to talk a little bit about that because 
a lot of times when people think of like testing equipment, you hit a couple balls, you write a couple pages on it, you post it on the internet and you're done with it. Do you want to talk a little bit about what your procedure is and how you guys do testing and how you conduct that? It's drastically different than anyone else does in the industry currently. Uh, and the reason why is because it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and there's not a lot of money on the other end. So from a business standpoint, most people don't look at this business model or business plan, whatever you want to call it, and go, wow, I want that guy's job. But the reality is it's a lot easier to hit five shots, write an article, and move to the next club, right? Um, and we get that. And there's value in that uh, for some people. Personally, when I do reviews like that, I think of it as like me giving my opinion on a piece of Correct. Equipment. And it's but not I don't want corners. people to take it too seriously. When we went and said, this is the what we want to be and what we want to do. And we traveled around and talked to all the knowledgeable people at all the manufacturers and the people that invented the robots and all these things. It became incredibly quickly apparent that to do it right, if you really were going to dedicate yourself to do it right, was going to take this amount of effort. You know, So there was no half assing it. Either you did five shots or you did 10,000 shots. There's no in between. There's no reason to do in between. You either do five and move to the next club and the next club and the next club, or you do 10,000 and you do it the way we do it. And, you know, granted, people might not like that or in the comments section not agree with it. If we, one, don't validate their last purchase or, two, they work for some golf company or are brand washed by some golf company, we get that. And that's to be expected. And that comes with the territory of having millions of readers every year. That's going to happen. But at the end of the day, man, I've got to keep my head down. And I got to move onward and upward. And I can't let these people keep me from getting where I want to get. And where I want to get is to solving a problem that I think the original purpose of my golf spot came about and was marketing was becoming more important than the performance of the products. I wanted to flip that and inverse that and flip it on its head and make performance more important than marketing. And when I'm done with what I'm planning on doing in the next five, 10 years, Golf companies will only produce products that perform, and the marketing, the bullshit marketing is going to go by the wayside because you can say it's 17 yards longer, but my golf spot is going to keep growing, and my golf spot is going to be able to prove and you know your claim every year. You're in the golf industry, and you pride yourself on your website about not taking money from major OEMs. Uh, how do you feed yourself? I mean, how how do you, how do you make your money then? Uh, we make it in a, a lot of different ways. The first and foremost is putting the consumer first. And monetization of that never is the priority. Now, obviously we have to make money or this place doesn't stay open. The manufacturers that do 20 million in revenue and above, we take no advertising dollars from if they're a major manufacturer that produce club uh, clubs that we test. If they are below that, we will accept advertising dollars from them only if their products perform in the top echelon of our testing. So for example, Snell, before they came out, we didn't know who they were, right? Snowballs were tested. They perform incredibly well. We published those results. They sell a lot of golf balls, right? Well, we want more people. Our job is to put the best performing products in people's bags. Well, if somebody only heard about that one day out of the year, we're doing a, mis a, you know, a disservice to consumers. Yeah, it'll go away. It'll we want yeah. to level the playing field in the golf industry. And if people make good products, we want you to hear about that. Are these the awards that you get for selling the most used cars? <laughs> hey Matt, is this where you hide out when you're hungover? <laughs> this would be the spot right here. I schedule um, every category that we do, so from bags all the way down to shoes, to speakers, everything that you ha have in a soft goods section. Before we do any test, we put out a poll on Twitter and all the social medias to find out what the consumer actually looks for when they look for a product or a bag or a speaker. So when we did the speaker one, we looked at what they wanted in this and the sound quality was a big, big one. How it fits in a cart was another one. So what I would do is I'll get that protocol printed out read every single thing that goes into that one and then we'll test it say with the gbl one we'll test that we'll do the same song over and over again the protocol goes into there and then we rank it accordingly then we do go and do exactly the same one and then bang 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 until all of them are done then we look at to see what they're actually um ranked and we'll go from one two three four five would you consider making one of my rap songs the one that you used to measure these with uh we could um it had to be a good song, so this could be a long time for me to get one of your ass. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> Matt, what do you do? 
every day? Uh, video stuff. So despite what you guys may believe, my golf spy is not run out of someone's mom's basement. This is actually the testing facility where they do all their testing, get the results for the data for all the reviews that they write. It's less than 2,000 square feet, but it's efficient. Space is used well. You have the two hitting bays back here for testing. You obviously have the putting section here that I showed you earlier. And then you have kind of a warehouse for all the clubs up here to test and then the office areas. But overall, uh, it's just a cool space. It feels very man cavey. Like it's just like, this is where I would want to come every day to go to work because it's just, it seems like a lot of wasting time and having fun. Would you say that? Is that accurate? What's that? <laughs> That's all I needed. <laughs> Do you have a sumo square? You might need it for these iPod 100s. <laughs>